Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. The food that angels are given. Of course, we know what that is. That is the body and blood of Christ, which we are celebrating today, the solemnity of this, this feast of the body and blood of Christ, the Eucharist. And we do this every year uh, to celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Eucharist. Actually, this year we'll spend another six weeks going over uh, the Eucharist, well, starting in the middle of July through August, as we'll be reading from John's account of John uh, chapter 6. And so the church, in its infinite wisdom, has us do that every three years because they know that the Eucharist, as we hear in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is the source and summit of the Christian life. So for Christians, the Eucharist is a source and summit of our life. Of course, we know it's, 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 a, it's a mystery, but it's a mystery that is, is given to, to us that we are able to receive of Jesus Christ. Now today, because we're in year B, we read from Mark's account of the Last Supper. And something interesting is, is happening here. What's well, not interesting, it's just important to point out that, that Mark makes it known right away that on the first day of the Feast of Elden and Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, this is when it was happening. So remember back then, we have two feasts coming together. So what happened in Jesus' time. We have the Feast of Passover, which is a one-time meal per se, but also the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, which is a seven-day celebration. And so we put these together, and we know this is where the Last Supper happens uh, as, as well. And what does the Passover celebrate? Well, we, we remember this, the story uh, of the Israelites, you know, as they're fleeing out of Egypt, how they have to sacrifice a lamb. But they continue to do this every year in remembrance of how God had delivered them out of slavery. So they'd all come together. And so when Jesus sends the apostles into Jerusalem to prepare the meal, it's not just like going down to Cub Foods and picking up a pre-made package, right? This is a huge event. And actually he sends, who does he send? We hear this in Luke's gospel. He sends Peter and he sends John. And this is profound in, in itself, but Peter and John, in order to prepare for this meal, would have gone and first, the first thing they have to do is to choose an unblemished lamb. And the lamb would be a male, be a year old, and could not have any imperfections. Of course, we hear the word lamb, and we should already think, because you may be looking at the altar, there's a lamb right there, and we see that we also have it's etching us day, behold the lamb of God, which is what St. John the Baptist says, behold the lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So we know that Jesus is that unblemished lamb for the whole world. We hear about that today in our second reading from Hebrews, as, as whoever the writer of Hebrews is uh, said, you know, that, that unblemished lamb. And so this is the first thing you have to do. And so once you purchase this lamb, you'd bring the lamb down to be, to be sacrificed. And actually in the temple area, there was kind of a low wall that you would bring the lamb. And you would you'd slit the throat of the lamb, and there'd be priests there. They'll collect that blood into a bowl. Once again, we go back to the story of the Passover, right? What do they do? They took that blood and they put it on the doorpost so that the angel would pass over them and not strike the firstborn of the family. And so once that sacrifice happened, the priest of the temple would take that blood and they'd pour it on the altar of sacrifice, Something interesting here that I didn't quite realize until this week as I was doing a little more research and, and scripture study, a.k.a. someone else is helping me with that, which is great, right? Makes me a lot smarter and, and actually more appreciative of, of what's going on in the scriptures is it wasn't just like two or three lambs that were being slaughtered. Uh, Brent Petrie, who I kind of has written a book on this, The Jewish Roots of, of the Eucharist, says... It was tens of thousands of lambs that were slaughtered that day. Can you imagine that? Tens of thousands. 
of blood going on the altar. That is a bloody sacrifice. But everyone was called to partake in this Passover meal. And the only place a sacrifice could happen was in the temple, was in Jerusalem. And so there they are, and they're spreading this this blood upon uh, the altar. As we know, what happens with Jesus, by the way? They strike his side in blood, and water pours out from his side. Well, after that spreading of the blood, by the way, for the, for the unblemished lamb, you would then skin it, you would spit it, so it could be roasted. So I know what it means to skin, but what does it mean to, to spit something? Well, I'm sure you've had barbecues before. Maybe you've roasted something over a fire. To do that, you have to spit it, which means you put a spike into it. Now, something interesting here for the lamb, by the way, was when they spit a lamb, it would be in two parts. One would go straight through, I don't want to go like this. So what does that look like? Like a cross. Kind of interesting. As they're leaving the temple area to go roast the lamb, tens of thousands of people will be walking with the lamb that looks like it's on a cross. And by the way, at this time, we could imagine that Jesus is walking, back, is walking into Jerusalem to that, that upper room and seeing lamb after lamb after lamb on a cross. My mind is already blown when I heard that, by the way, right? But this this image of what's going on, this symbolism of what is going on. And then what what happens, by the way, is we also know that this, this Passover meal, as I mentioned before, has to be done year after year after year. So it's this act of remembrance. We see this from Exodus chapter 21, by the way. And so we, we go into this gospel passage now as, as well, and we see that, that Jesus is going to be the leader of the Passover meal. We, we have this. Maybe you've been to a Seder meal. I know here at uh, St. John the Baptist, our Catholic Montessori school, every year that the kids partake in the Seder meal, and there's someone who acts as, as the priest, right? Who acts as, as the leader, the leader of the family. And so this would have been Jesus. And we have from the different gospel accounts that it all goes to script and tell a certain part. And when is that? While they're eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, take it. That's part of the script, by the way. But this is where the change happens. This is my body. This is my body. And then he doubles down. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. By the way, we heard about the blood of the covenant in our first reading today as well from Exodus 24. This is with Moses, where you have the blood of the word of God. Not the covenant of the word of the God, but also the covenant of the blood which is spread upon everyone there. But now Jesus is saying, no, no, no. This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. So he's saying, once again, I am called to be. I am that perfect sacrifice. I am that unblemished lamb. I am going to give myself to you as food of the angels. So you may pass over from this world to the next, so that you may have eternal life. And by the way, the most, one of the most vital parts of the sacrifice of Passover is that you must consume the lamb. It's not just a sacrifice. As we know, we go back to the scriptures as well, the consumption of, of the lamb, all of it, nothing's to be left behind for the next day. And so Jesus is saying, you must consume me. This is the most important part of this sacrifice. Take it and eat it. Take it and drink the body and blood of Christ. And what a great gift that is to us. 
They're able to partake in this sacrifice every single time that we come to Mass. By the way, the end of this, this scripture passage from Mark, we hear, and this happens during the Passover meal as well, that they sing a hymn. It says, then after singing a hymn. By the way, what hymn would that be? It wasn't Amazing Grace. It wasn't on Eagle's Wings. It wasn't anything like that. It was from Psalms 113 to 118. And that actually would have been the same psalms that were sung in the temple during the sacrifice of the lambs for, you know, preparing for Passover. The priests would have been singing these, and other people would have been singing these hymns. It was the same hymns that you sing at the Passover meal as well. And one of these psalms would be Psalm 116, which we heard today. Now imagine the leader would be singing this psalm. So in this case, Jesus is the one who is singing this hymn, this psalm of 116. From Jesus' words, how shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you, I will offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Three main things in there. Cup of salvation I will take up. Of course, Jesus offers us that cup of salvation. It's interesting what he says, you know, that I will be the son of your handmaid. So even there we see that, that reference to Mary. But thirdly, where he says, I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. What does Eucharist mean, by the way? Thanksgiving. The sacrifice of thanksgiving for us. And so here's Jesus saying these words and going of giving up his life, being that perfect sacrifice for us. Why? So that we may partake in this new Passover. We may receive this food of angels, and what a great gift it is. My brothers and sisters, never miss an opportunity to receive the Eucharist. How hard it was last year, I know, during the pandemic, and still now a little bit as well, right? When you longed for the Eucharist. We always want to have that longing for the Eucharist and not to take it for granted. But to do anything, to come to the sacrifice of thanksgiving, to receive this food of angels, and to receive Jesus Christ truly present in the body and blood of Christ. Because when we receive him, what happens? He becomes part of us. We share in his divinity. And in doing so, we know that we'll be able to pass from this world to the next.